my name's Sarah Olson. I'm a senior software engineer at the Nerdery. I'm also the director of our local Women Who Code. Um, I have uh, two beautiful children. I'm a mom, and so th my children must be be beautiful. Um, I've had those kids while I was working in tech um, at a smaller company where there weren't a lot of kids. Um, I also had my first one at a large corporation where there were a lot of people having kids and there were a lot of benefits attached to that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what benefits are available to women who are having children and to families and how your company may or may not support you um, with those children. Um, so if you look at this map here, we are one of the only countries in the world that does not have paid leave for mothers. It's pretty bad. Uh, the, our, out of the 185 countries they looked at, the three that do, do not offer any paid leave are U.S., Suriname, and Papua New Guinea. So every other country has some sort of paid leave, and that goes anywhere from you know, a few weeks to over a year, depending on where you go. Um, in the U.S., all we have is the FMLA, which is the Family Medical Leave Act, which gets you 12 weeks unpaid. And that just means that you can't lose your job, but it doesn't really give you any benefits beyond that. Um, if you do have maternity policy, it's usually covered under short-term disability, which is strange because having a baby is not really a disability. Um, and your coverage is anywhere from 40 to 100% of your pay. Uh, adoptive fathers and uh, fathers and adoptive parents uh, rarely get leave. If they do, it's usually around a week or two. Um, so they did a poll to find out how many people supported paid leave, and there's a lot of support for it uh, from actual employees. Unfortunately, employers have been a little bit slower to uh, uh, get on board. Um, some of the research on how many people actually get to use paid leave are pretty bad. Uh, currently, one fourth or 25% of employed mothers return to work within two weeks of having a baby, childbirth. Two weeks. Um, there are a lot of benefits to having mothers at home with their babies, and it's not just actual medical benefits. Um, they have shown that it substantially reduces the death of infants and young children. And the longer that the mom is at home, the longer that that uh, benefit is in place. Uh, it improves the health of your babies medically. Um, it also improves the mother's ability to breastfeed. Um, I don't know how many people here have breastfed, but being stressed out and constantly running around and trying to take care of your baby and work at the same time, it's really hard to keep up your milk supply. Um, it's also good for moms uh, at employers. Uh, they did a study with Google when they upped their parental leave to 18 weeks. The rate at which mothers left the company fell by 50%. So it helps support moms in their careers as well. So employers are finally starting to offer paid leave. Um, they are uh, kind of had a little dip in 2014, but 2015 was the best year at for, for parental leave policies, and hopefully that is only increasing. Um, a lot of the top tech companies are substantially increasing their paid leave right now. Um, Etsy just announced that they have six months for both men and women who are having children. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, Netflix, Microsoft, Adobe, Facebook, Amazon, Apple. They all have um, policies now that are, you know, more than two months, two to six months. Um, so it's good to see that that is starting to happen. Um, the city of San Francisco just this last week passed a parental leave law where you get six weeks fully paid, and that's for everyone who works in the city of San Francisco. So uh, that's a really great policy, and I hope to see other cities follow suit. Um, it's really important to note that parental leave is not just about moms who actually give birth to a child. This is important for everyone who is bringing a child into their family. 
And it's also important for men, if they are offered parental leave, or even if they're not, that they uh, take it. Um, a lot of the problems with gender disparity is that we're putting too much pressure on women to take care of their families, and we're not putting that same pressure on men. And the more that men show how important it is for them to be at home with their families, the more it's okay for women to do so as well. And it's going to make it so more supportive for both of them um, at, their, at, at their employers. So what are some things that we can do to support moms who've just had babies and are nursing? Um, these are some really awesome stock photos that this woman took based on her experiences pumping at work. Um, this never happened to me at work, but it did happen at a dinner after work because I had had long meetings and I didn't have a chance to pump after work. And um, fortunately, I had a sweater to cover up, but it was still pretty embarrassing. So just note that if you um, are working with a mother who is nursing, to make sure that she has time to take breaks, that she can get out and pump when she needs to, um, you know, try to break things up a bit. She's got a lot going on. Um, when I started working, uh, uh, when I had my child, I worked at Thomson Reuters, and they had a really fantastic mother's room. Uh, it had like little cubes with like doors that shut, and it was like her own little private sanctuary. Um, when I started working in the nerdery, they did not have a mother's room at that time, and so I was, you know, trying to find conference rooms to go and take breaks into, and I actually used this sign on there. It says, Wonder Woman is using her superpowers to feed her infant child, please don't disturb. Um, because I work at the nerdery, you know. Um, but I was always terrified that someone was going to barge in on me or that I wouldn't be done and another meeting would be starting up and I wouldn't be able to go answer the door. Um, so please don't make moms do this. Don't make them pump in a bathroom. It is not good. Um, not only because you have a lot of supplies that you're trying to balance and put places, but also do you think about the smell? I mean, you're feeding your child with this milk and you don't want to be sitting in a smelly bathroom. It's not sanitary. It's really bad. It's actually illegal in Minnesota. Please don't do this. Um, don't do this either. Um, f find a, a safe, comfortable spot for women to pump. Um, also, it's fantastic if they have their own sink because otherwise you're bringing your pump supplies into the kitchen where everyone can see it, and it's, it's, it's not the best scenario. So having a sink in the room is also fantastic, um, some place they can clean up. So here's what like a really nice mother's room looks like. And this is actually the mother's room I had to use at a conference once. They told me they had a mother's room, I was super excited, but it was in a basement in a building that no one else was in. It had no ceiling. There was actual construction debris on the ground and tape closing it off, but I had no other option. So I actually pumped in that room and I took a picture of it and put it on Twitter. <laughs> so. Um, so here's like what moms use to pump. They have this bag with a cooler and they have their bottles and the pump and it's a lot of stuff. You have to worry about where you're going to put this milk to keep it cold. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that women need to have in order to comfortably pump. So here's a list of things in case you're wondering, what can I do to support women? Uh, what can we do to support families, not just women? Uh, flexible work arrangements are really important. Um, people will leave without it, and so it's not always something that employers notice is a problem, but you'll notice through attrition. Um, so offer telecommuting, offer different work schedules, a compressed work week or part-time options. Um, don't micromanage where all you care about is that your employee is sitting in a chair at a certain time. Just, you know, look at the work that they're doing. Look at how productive they are. Trust your employee. Um, On-site daycare is something that not a lot of employers actually offer. But the ones that do have seen really great results um, with employee retention 
And with sick time and other leave due to problems with your daycare not being available, to your child getting sent home early from school because they're sick, there's all kinds of issues that p families have trying to find childcare. And if you make that really easy for them, they'll have to take less time off of work. Um, this is one that I really struggled with. When you have a baby, especially for the first time, there is going to be a pretty substantial period of adjustment where both parents are going to be very tired and not quite thinking straight and they're going to have memory issues and trying to multitask is hard. Just understand that that's a thing and try and support them through it instead of making them feel like they can never keep up and that they're struggling. It's going to hurt their performance even more. Um, so just know that there is this period of time where, you know, six months to a year after they have a child, that things are gonna be a little rough and do what you can to support them through that. Um, so talking a little bit about my experience. Um, so like I said, I was working at uh, Thomson Reuters, which is a huge company here, um, when I had my first child. And I, at that time, had eight weeks of full pay for my maternity leave, which was really good at the time. Um, and I used two weeks of vacation. So it was a pretty good leave. Um, when I came back, we had the great mother's rooms. Um, but it was still very much a struggle. I was really tired. It was my first child. Um, and that kind of year after I had that baby, I was really struggling with keeping up with work, with getting enough done, with having the right kind of mindset to be really productive. And I feel like that really hurt my performance at the company. And I really didn't feel like I was doing what the best I could there. Um, I ended up, because of the commute time and the inability to telecommute, um, I, I changed careers and I went to Optum. It was closer to home. Um, they had a pretty good mother's room, not as good as Thomson Reuters. Um, and so, you know, it was, my child is older, so it was less of a struggle. Um, but, you know, big corporations have great insurance benefits. They have better leave policies. So if that's something that's really important to you, those are some of the benefits you get from larger companies. Um, when I came to the nerdery, it was a much smaller company. They weren't uh, as aware of what mothers need, and I had to do a lot of kind of education with them on here are the things that I need to be successful as a mom. Um, so at the time, um, I got six weeks at 60% pay. They have now upped that to 100% pay, which is great. Um, but that was also really hard for you know, a family who now has two children that they're going to be putting into daycare. And how do I afford to take any more time off than what you've given me? So I had to go back to work right away. And that was a big struggle. Um, so there was no mother's room at first. Um, I worked with them to get that in place. And they were really receptive to the things as long as I told them, like, here's what I need from you. So if you're working at a small company, make sure you look into the laws, like don't make me pump in a bathroom. If you go on the Minnesota like law website, it will actually tell you that is not acceptable and you can show that to your employer. I did. Um, <laughs> um, just make sure that your manager understands, like I'm adjusting to a new baby, you know, she's not sleeping or he's not, you know, he's colicky or whatever the issues are. Um, might not necessarily make it that much better, but at least you're being as communicative as possible and that they can try to understand you and your needs. Um, the other thing to be very wary about is conferences. When you're attending a conference, do they have a mother's room for you? Do they have childcare? Um, what are the things that you need? Because that was the kind of thing that I would kind of go, oh, I'm going to a conference and I have no idea what I'm gonna do, how am I gonna manage this? So the more that tech conferences can offer those things, uh, the more supportive they're going to be for families and especially pumping moms. Um, and that's all I have for you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you for the uh, presentation. Yeah. I'm uh, involved in organizing a uh, national tech conference that happens several times a year. And one of the things that I've been uh, talking to the, the actual, you know, the company that runs it is trying to figure out how to uh, incorporate uh, childcare. And so uh, 
from their perspective, it's really not an easy or obvious thing to do. And so I'm wondering if you have any insights on uh, how an organization, or, or anybody else here <laughs> actually, on, on how a conference can actually do that um, such that they don't run into liability issues or, or the expense is not prohibitive and, and, uh, and yet it actually would work for a mother. Yeah, um, Ash is probably a good person to talk to about this too. Um, but I've been looking into that. There are companies that offer um, childcare for conferences, like that's what they do. So that's who I've been looking to. Um, I don't remember all the names, but there, um, there are definitely companies out there who kind of just take care of that for you. Um, the one thing that I'm not entirely sure about is, you know, if you have a very young baby, you know, there are requirements to how many providers there needs to be at different age levels. So if you have really young children, you need more people there to take care of them. So the specifics of it, I'm not exactly sure about, but since childcare was offered here. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of different things that you can do. Um, one is a lot of um, childcare providers will tell you things like, we need X number of adults per children. We need to know what their um, dietary needs, their allergies, any special other needs that they have. Um, another option that I see people do if they can't get insurance, because you do need insurance if you have children in spaces, um, is that they'll contract with a daycare that is near near the um, event space, um, and so parents will drop children off at the daycare, and then um, that's a safe enclosed space. It has all those ins insurances in place, um, and you know that your children are you know, being taken care of by licensed caregivers. I just have a couple of thoughts. I, okay, um, just to kind of add to that, um, I've been to some conferences where um, they have provided childcare, and I, I would recommend also that the outsourcing of it, find a good, reputable company. Um, they'll, they tend to know what they need and the type of space they need. They can work that stuff out with you. Um, another thing to consider for accessibility is childcare grants. Um, that can be a helpful thing too, um, to either support or at least partly support the cost of that childcare for the day. Um, and another option, um, and this was, if it's going to be like a, a conference that people may have to travel a lot for, um, I've seen uh, situations where they, they allow you to use the grant um, to pay for the ticket to bring along someone, a caregiver with you. So we've been able to do that where I brought my spouse to the conference um, and we partially funded his plane ticket um, with a child care grant. And so that's something that can also be very supportive. Um, and then I would also just say if it's, again, if you expect people might have to travel, um, planning and making it aware, making people aware of that possibility um, as far in advance as possible so that they know that attending the conference is an option um, is very helpful, so. Agreed. All right, thank you.